Hello, everybody, and sorry it's been a while. Welcome back to Korea. But not the Korea that you've known for most of the game, because, of course, much like these little weird nubbins that the major powers, like Portugal, for example, might have, or, of course, the uh, maybe larger ones that the Brits might have, we have started to expand across the world as well. Allow me to introduce you to Korean Western New Guinea. You will notice, though, I was obviously far too overambitious. 9,500 days? This is... <laughs> this is too much. It is for that reason that at the start of this video, I'm going to go back through and just reduce a couple, but not all of them. What I'll probably do is perhaps head back over this way, and let's not step on... France's toes so much. They can colonize here, though. Uh, and we'll still keep maybe one African one. We'll see how we go. There are a couple of other options, but um, I think we'll keep that for now. You'll notice it will start to make colonizing just that little bit easier. Uh, over in New Zealand, we do have uh, Na Titoa. Hmm. So we could keep colonizing the south. We also have Wellington. This one's actually happening really quickly. I might leave that. Uh, not at all biased, of course, because it's where I'm from. Now, others, Kanak, going really fast. Wonderful, we'll keep a hold of that. It's really actually just the more remote ones that are a little bit more challenging that were holding us up. Um, and I think that actually, even just with a couple of those, it's probably freed us up. What I would encourage you to perhaps look at a little bit less are uh, <laughs> some of the... High tension regions. That's right. We're standing on literally everybody's toes. Although, of course, most of these nations are nothing burgers, right? No army, decentralized powers. I mean, of course they are. We're colonizing them. So it doesn't matter so much. Uh, other issues, though, market access. And this, of course, is actually a big problem because by establishing all of these territories, which is all fine and good, right? Let's take Wellington as an example, actually. <laughs> Right on Australia, <laughs> the thorn in Australia's side. Uh, so let's have a look. So we could incorporate it in to our state, 12 bureaucracy. I might do that just cause. Discoverable resources potentially in the future as the homelands of the Australians and the Māori. That's all fine and good. The issue here is that there is 0% market access. And so whatever's going on here is just going to fail to transition and cooperate and trade with the rest of our market. So there's not a great point in having it unless arguably we give it some infrastructure. Uh, the easiest thing for us to do, of course, would be to attach it to the sea. If we can get a port here, we can actually start to use this place. This will provide it with market access. I'm a little concerned about just how long it might take to get some of these ports online. It's obviously not worth building up a construction sector. Let's have a look-see. So if I shift this one to the front of my queue, what are we looking at? 15 weeks? Hey. That is not, that is not a problem. <laughs> that is not a problem at all. Now, this South Island one's going to be massive as well because there is, look at this, Naitahu. All of this land here is still for us to claim. We could probably have the Korean South Island of New Zealand if we move fast. I'd like this one, therefore, to be a big focus for us. So let's make sure that we get a port here as well. Uh, we probably won't build a lot of other infrastructure because I don't know if this will end up if this ends up just one territory, which it actually looks like it might, then we could get away with building a construction sector and building it out a bit more. But for now, what I'll do is go through and make sure that we have ports starting to be built in some of our key colonial territories so that we can attach them to the rest of our market. Uh, Vanuatu as well is being colonized just as quickly, naturally leading to these high tensions, but that's fine. So I'll connect up the rest of these states as well as we move up through the Pacific. And of course, this will give us good control over areas that we can actually access. And we'll look to port these ones up, uh, <laughs> this one, as a secondary priority, I think. Oh my goodness, and of course, it all started here in Korean celebs. These Korean celebrities, we should follow their advice. Migration attraction, uh, disinterest in the industrialists. A little bit of radicalization, we might just throw the industrialists under the bus. Now, this one is just a real hotbed. This is where we're going to probably run into colonial powers. I mean, look at this. <laughs> wow. There are just so many different interests here. 
from around the world, but actually still quite a lot of local ones. Spanish, Philippines, yep, that's all fun and good. Uh, this one here, though, we definitely want to have connected. We've got a port coming online eventually. Uh, and what I also might need to do is look to try and free up some authority to maybe reduce the, uh, <laughs> the devastation. Although, to be fair, actually, and to put on my worst colonial hat, or maybe my best colonial hat, uh, I don't actually know if the devastation here really matters. I mean, what is the territory providing at the moment? 4,000 people? What? 55,000. Apologies. Either way, it's not a massively important part of our, of our wider nation. So, at the moment, I'm just going to diplomatically sidestep around that. Um, I'm going to leave these slow ass ones slow assing away. It's because of severe malaria. Naturally pretty problematic. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Keep up the good work. These ones moving much faster. Uh, malaria, not a problem. And you'll see that it's just our normal colonial growth speed applying. So actually, I think we're stretching out at a reasonable pace. I like this a lot. My only regret is actually genuinely not doing this sooner. Like, <laughs> Korean Tonga. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Uh, Hawaii, unfortunately, already, uh, already doing its own thing. We could move a little more aggressively over to that, but we'll consider that in future. For the time being, let's get these places ported up and ready to be connected to Empire. We're going to end our trade agreement with the Great Qing. See ya. Not because I want to save my influence, but because it was actually really bad for our economy. You'll notice we've just recovered a lot of funds. They were effectively, I feel, just bludging off us for a long time. <laughs> Man, they're paying a lot in earthquake relief at the moment, though. So, you know, it, it's no surprise. Of course, we were initially a part of their empire, and so it didn't matter so much. But when we broke away, we found that our economy was actually much better at theirs than surviving. And that turns out to hopefully still be true. Uh, speaking of the economy, actually, and this low market access will begin to sort itself out, so I might just out of sight, out of mind that bad boy. Uh, we have a little bit of taxation capacity going awry. That will be bad for our economy, uh, which is, of course, a bad thing for everybody. So let's make sure that we fix that up. It's just a minor emerging problem in our two core territories uh, inside of Korea here, but to be expected. Uh, I'll crank the speed up a bit now that my <laughs> introductory thoughts are out of the way and we're back into it. Uh, goods shortages, we only have one, so that's fairly easy to address. Isolated regions go away. And so we can go away. <laughs> uh, the isolated regions, fairly similar of, well, a fairly similar problem to the rest. And of course, we'll be able to fix it by providing that better infrastructure. This will be a little bit more focused on some of the local infrastructures as well, rather than just attaching them to us with a port. But again, we'll address that down the line. Uh, oh, and I see that we have a lot of things in our reserve. We've still only got 45 regulars, which is not great. Might put another burst of our economic activity into that now that we've built up a lot of money in our cash reserves. Uh, our navy is still a bit weak as well. And as we start to build up... Uh, <laughs> you know, territories far and wide, it actually mightn't hurt that we build up a little bit more of our navy here too. So why don't I, now that we've sort of queued up about, not quite all of the ports that we'll need, but at least enough of them to start getting that rolling, I'll throw all of these to the top and apparently accidentally a university. Uh, let's get the ones that were nearly done. <laughs> and this university that's nearly done as well, uh, just a bit closer to the top so that that's, uh, you know, not quite as much of a headache. We'll also briefly intervene to cancel a whole load of trade routes. See ya, see ya, see ya. Uh, also wouldn't want to be ya. And then let's queue up this next wave of military development. So I think that the naval bases will be key. We'll of course also need to go back through the supply chain. Make sure that we have ports, for example. Uh, shipyards as well. But let's start with the naval bases. Uh, technologies leave something to be desired here as well to be fair <laughs> but you know what that's fine let's get these guys upgraded to their first aid while we're here and, and looking at this kind of stuff uh and then i think 
we'll slam another uh, six and four. We'll get another 10 naval bases down. Um, effectively adding an extra 50% to our military. Nice. Uh, this is going to put a little bit of pressure on this market, the shipyards in particular, right? So let's... Very good in many places. But of course we'll need them. They'll start to become productive. So we'll queue up, I don't know, one, two, three, four of those shipyards. And as this stuff starts to come to the top of the queue, I might look to, you know, sort of dot a few in between so that we get a bit of balance. We are paying a little bit more than we should for these anyway. Uh, most of these trade routes are fairly garbage. We'll grab one just to help them out a fraction. <laughs> Input good shortages though. We need opium! And also hardwood. So we were probably reliant on Chinese opium. That was one of the good things, right, from that trade. However, good news is we can just trade with them. Agreement's over, but we can continue to trade. It will cost us bureaucracy now that we're not in a, a more closely aligned trading relationship. Oh, thanks, Siri. Uh, but that doesn't matter. Who cares? Okay, so with opium hopefully starting to come in, hardwood is going to be a, another big one. We could change our local productions and start to tick this up a bit. But again, for the time being, I mean, we have so much trade capacity in so many ports that I don't see why we don't just start importing some of this. All of these are fairly small trade routes, but man alive, some of them are productive. Now that we're getting access to a load of different markets, right? The Hawaiian market. We're reaching out, of course, across the Pacific with our colonies. And that's going to get us actually access to, by the looks of things, some better prices. So maybe all of that infrastructure that we built up so early on, because we were part of the, the greater Chinese empire, is actually starting to pay dividends. Standard of living decreased 13 in the Korean South Island. Don't worry, Korean South Island. I've got good news for you. And we're actually here to watch it play out live. We just took Christchurch, um, which actually does nothing because it doesn't really matter so much. And this is just one big territory. But nice to see us making gains. Oh, they're going to really hate me even more than they already do. But you know what? That's fine. I mean, this is a very delayed priority. I'll, I'll shuffle it up later, but I think we'll keep going with that. <laughs> what I was actually going to say was, though, take a look at this. We unlocked a better engine, and that's going to help our mines. Or get a little bit of extra tech for a water tube boiler. We'll take the mine stuff. Great. Uh, <laughs> even though I got distracted with Australia, the uh, actual point that I was going to make here is that things are starting to look a little bit better. Unproductive trade routes out the way. Economy still doing very well, even with a little bit of extra tax relief. I like this. This is good. Our super government is having a really difficult time getting us out of this traditionalist bloody economic system. Which, when we remove it, will actually help our taxation capacity problem. So I will need to, or I won't need to, build as much bloody government administration everywhere. We already have the best colonial law, so I can't really speed it up that way. However, ooh, an event that's, that actually has two good outcomes. We can make the upper and middle strata more loyal by prominent members of high society being seen organizing luxurious parties in new lavish urban buildings or oh, the party will never end and they'll expect a higher standard of living but we'll get a lot more loyalty out of them let's do it we're going to take the risk there i think uh, let's do it we love wealthy people uh, <laughs> what i was going to say was though we have this institution ha huh. still a little locked you cannot increase your investment in this institution above its maximum level of three lame because this would help us grow our colonies a little bit faster and look at this everybody <laughs> we're freaking doing it <laughs> kanak welcome you can be incorporated you you how many people live here Sixty-three thousand. nice a hundred thousand people in vanuatu as we of course begin to incorporate these our incorporated population the number of people we have in our incorporated society will help us colonize faster because the speed in which you colonize is determined by uh or, or largely determined one of the reasons anyway by how many people you have inside of your incorporated state so <laughs> i mean 
we could change our migration laws and other things, of course, but hey, let's incorporate a few of these territories in. Let them know that they are actually one of us. What I was going to say was, though, that we've done quite well in the Pacific land grab here. <laughs> uh you can see that the brits have taken uh, a few territories right unfortunately out from under our nose but for the most part we seem to have kind of shared and divided it between them and us and tensions are going away of course as as these nations begin to go away and become less of a problem it's good uh the economy is slightly in the red but i'm fine with that because we have so much money oh my god so much money in our reserves that it doesn't really matter so much uh Oh, speaking of which, uh, we could spend a whole load of money. Gets developing can opener. Huh. Or we can just be like, figure it out yourselves, armed forces. They're having trouble opening canned food. You know what? Fine. <laughs> the Korean government is funding the development of the can opener. Uh, and in other more prominent news, members of the officials, outspoken supporters of agrarianism, have Wait, and close allies of our 1,868-year-old ruler. <laughs> this is, of course, blasphemy. Uh, he's only 42 years old. Look, uh, butter spring chicken. Butter spring chicken. Mmm. Um, anyway. Pff, what have we got here? Minus 15% neckwind chance on our damn agrarianism. Am I ever going to push this through? Or minus 10% and we get minus 5% bureaucracy. Oh, good God. So is the nature of politics. Unbelievable. Do we just can this and shift our focus somewhere else? And now, I might remind you, super majority gov government. We're basically anybody who wants to be is in power. And the only people who aren't are the rural folk and, of course, the marginalized people. Um, it's done, interestingly, it kind of helped us to stabilize the clout suppose that makes sense still doing well with the industrialists but we don't have a lot of positive benefits at the moment as you can see people are pretty mid with me while we have the super majority conservative government or more conservative government anyway we'll be able to push through some different laws and uh i really think it's time what we could do is shift this law to increase or decrease strength of a certain group but i think we're good with the appointed bureaucrats there are institutions that we just don't have that we really should. We have loads of bureaucracy, so we can afford to have these extra institutions. Institutions are so important. Uh, I'm thinking we either get schools, healthcare, uh, the police, or home affairs. These are all very important things now that I say them out loud. Healthcare is going to be difficult to push through. Schools are a little bit easier with the religious schools, at least to begin with. And that means that maybe the state religion could be a, an interesting move first. At the moment, we kind of just get penalized for this. Like, there isn't, isn't really a great benefit. I mean, we can do different things with the schools, I suppose. But, honestly, it's a good start. 25%. Not bad. The other option would be to get the police. And actually, there are some better pass rates here, probably. Let me check. Police, 45%. Yeah. Let's do the police. If we do this one, uh, rather than the local police force, we don't add any extra support to other political groups. Militarized police force could be something to consider moving forward. But look at this, 45% chance to pump through a dedicated police force, reducing radicals from standard of living decreases by a little bit, which is great, and also penalties from turmoil. And as we know, there's a little bit of turmoil going on. Ah. Not so much, of course, in the beautiful mainland, the motherland, but in some of these areas where we're stretching out, this is actually becoming my crowning jewel. And, and, gonna be a really resource-rich territory as well. Why don't we give this place, which has, what, how many people? 100,000. Okay, it's fine. It's actually a race against every other power here too. The Dutch East Indies are gonna hoover up a lot of this. But if we could maybe grab it at least a sort of a nice looking little bit, could be all right. <laughs> uh, there's a ship upgrade. Let's continue with the ship upgrades. Although, actually, hello, our normal standing army. You've got some quite basic ticks that we might grab before we start to move through to, you know, four years worth of research. Let's dust off 
th uh, things that might seem advanced to you but aren't yet known to us, like rifling and field works. Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to start improving relations with the Dutch East Indies because we're going to be bumping into them a lot. Uh, and we're probably going to need some friends. We could also improve relationship with the Australians because we don't really want to fight down here in New Zealand and Australia. We'd probably lose. <laughs> uh, dedicated police force can pass and it will hurt the religious group in the process. Or alternatively, we could boost up the PB, really hurt the religious group uh, and have a slightly reduced chance at passing it. Eh, we'll just pass it with their support. I think that's fine. And we've also been asked to kindly burn a letter. Huh? PB, a prominent member of the Conservative Party, has been accused of corruption, which he strenuously denied, as you would. Uh, so we can reduce their momentum or their popularity. Let's slap their momentum down. Honestly, probably not a bad thing, but we do want to keep using them. Holy moly. <laughs> Look at that shift in momentum. Those events are so freaking powerful. <laughs> that is outstanding. They're currently projected to get get this, 0% of the vote, because momentum is below 100%. What? <laughs> oh, that is so good. Do we have more, more momentum swaying benefits here? Plus 10% political strength and momentum added to the Conservative Party. At a relatively late stage in the election, everybody, with 15 days to go. A monk has been preaching in favor of the party and is convinced that their victory has been foreseen in God's plan. Oh. So we could slap the speech with a whole load of reduced popularity and give them a little bit of a swing. We could just add more momentum to the Liberal Party and just say, you know what? Go nuts! Uh, or, hmm... Or we could give them strength and say, yeah, your speech worked, basically. This is a really interesting one. I think God surely wants the Liberal Party to win, though. Right? Have we passed our legislation yet? When does this go through? 33 days. Uh, we can get away with... Uh, we can probably get away with that. Yeah. Not that the election results actually matter that much, but I think God wants the Liberal Party to win. Although, actually, I've had a change of heart. Let's go with the middle-of-the-road option. This will hurt this guy's popularity as a politician incredibly. Uh, <laughs> but it will give them a little bit of momentum. Let's see what it does. <laughs> because, of course, it wasn't enough to change anything. And that's right, everybody. The votes are in. And by <laughs> some kind of... Rather suspicious victory, to be completely honest. Uh, they did it, everybody. They freaking did it. 100% of the vote. However, with this checkpoint in what was but a blink in the eye. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, let's have a look. So at the moment, we're 100% legitimate. Uh, if we throw out the Conservative Party, we're only 54% legitimate. Because, of course, at the moment, still in Victoria 3, and this will change as the game develops, and as we know from the roadmap over the next few years, uh, but in particular over the next few months even, legitimacy will become more important. The votes, outcomes of votes, especially more in democracies rather than constitutional monarchies, but that's fine, uh, will be more important, but at the moment they're not, especially. And so we can actually just leave it. It's fine. Keep pushing through this really powerful reform with our super majority government absolutely fine with me um i don't actually need to give it much more of a boosted success chance although we could of course Ooh, the armed forces suggest a more hardline foreign policy towards great ching due to our poor relations interesting so we can deteriorate them by 50 and get extra approval for the armed forces or lose some authority all right who needs him? Eh? Huh? <laughs> Who needs him? Once they fracture, we might even jump in. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> our fractured relations with China have put some extra strains on our economy and, well, basically, <laughs> it's caused some issues with some trade. Uh, however, 
we have access to a lot of different markets now. And so I think we'll get our dye from Bali. It's an incredibly productive trade route. Uh, that'll fix that issue. There are a whole lot of government goods. Uh, fabric, I think I've got on top of. Opium is, is going to be a, a big problem. Get a little bit out of Vietnam. We might need to figure out a way to secure a better supply of this, really. Really heavily concentrated in but a few core territories. Currently, of course, not easily accessible. Uh, it looks like now it's still opium. I know you want opium, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, and also man of war. Oh, hello. And we now finally have a dedicated police force. The rural folk hate it, but we don't care because they're not in power. Um, and all of the slightly more conservative groups love it. The armed forces who are now actually the most powerful of them all, though, looking the best. Now, what I'll quickly do is add uh, some more shipyards. Although, actually, we already have quite a few. We'll add one more to that queue. We get, we've got through most of that queue now, and it doesn't seem to have had a huge impact on price. These trade routes suck. I guess we could get a few from Spain. <laughs> They're actually really bad. Uh, I'm going to get more shipyards and then also let's have a look at their or really just across the board what are we doing how are we producing things it's probably time to upgrade a lot of this there are two different ways to approach it you could just go through and be like upgrade 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 and then fix the problems afterwards that works better for trading nations of which we are so i'm more likely to push through things like that this will put more strain on our die but we have great access to die uh, it will put more of a focus, of course, on hmm, on our porcelain and less on glass. And as you can see, every single one of these upgrades is going to change things considerably, right? Paper bleaching. Uh, more paper, consuming more dye. That's fine with me, actually. Again, dyes are something we have easy access to. Uh, more coal and sulfur. These things are slightly more difficult. My shipyards are what I'm really interested in. Um, so we could get a whole load more clippers out of them, but it will cost us more engines and hardwood. I think that's fine. We'll fix the engine and hardwood things down the line. Uh, we also probably need to get like urban centers improved for better services, better transport. Oh, look, at the people are actually not going to know what hit them. Let's just go through and do a mega, mega societal upgrade. What's that? You want standardized filing systems? Oh boy, consider it done. Don't say I don't rule with a sort of a class that is unchallenged. <laughs> uh, chemical plants we could upgrade slightly or we could go the whole hog. Let's upgrade them slightly just to ease them into it. Tooling workshops, um, move away from pig iron as well. What will it do? Consume less iron, more steel. Yeah, steel. I mean, steel's going to become a big part of what we do, of course, so that's fine. And then finally, glassworks. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We also need a lot of basics. Like, our food production sucks. It just sucks. Um, these dye plantations? Oh, yes. Because, of course, we don't just have to trade to get access to... Where am I? We don't just have to trade to get access to these, do we? We can also build them. And, you know... We're starting to get a really decent colony here. I've got one construction sector plodding away. Let's get uh, a railway in the queue. Let's get probably, well, maybe some administrative centers, but actually I think we might go straight for resource harvest mode and let's get like f five dye plantations here. <laughs> nice. Nadu, the Solomons, and Korean East New Guinea are all a little isolated. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> we'll fix that. Now, our economy is about to undergo some massive shocks, so uh, don't be alarmed if you <laughs> see things start to look uh, a little scary. Everything's going to be fine. In 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 days, we'll continue to hoover all of this up. It's looking great. Although my authority does, my authority could probably still be put to good use. Let's put our new institution to good use. Hello, law enforcement. Would you like to be 
fully upgraded. <laughs> Let's slam it all the way up. And if it becomes too expensive, I'll start to rein it in. But we have five levels of upgrade available. Obviously, it'll do one at a time, about 50 weeks each time. And this will help reduce radicalism. Great. But also reduce the penalties from turmoil. We have a lot of people in turmoil. We have one point. We have a lot of radicalism. <laughs> Let's crack down with our new, brand spanking new, law enforcement system. Um, maybe we should add another one while we're at it. What do you reckon? Home affairs? A little bit of secret police up in here? That might help to clamp down uh, a little bit. It would reduce uh, revolution, secession, progression speed, political radicalism. Okay. National Guard would allow us to mobilize an extra 65 battalions, though. And I think I like that more than the rest of this crap. Let's get a National Guard online. <laughs> the intelligence here aren't going to like it, but our militarists will like it. And having extra battalions to call on, particularly if the Chinese decide to declare war on us or, or us to them, uh, can only but be a good thing. While we're the number eight producer of paper worldwide, we could probably use a little bit of extra. British market, it's just barely profitable for us to trade within. Um, we're, we're really good at paper. So let's, <laughs> let's do more paper, damn it. Let's get some up in the mainland though, in this case, I think. Um, and I might also, now that we're not constructing as much in these, oh my God, they're hemorrhaging people like there's no tomorrow. Now that we're not constructing as much here, I think we can reduce down the overheads temporarily in these territories quite considerably actually let's smack that down another thing that we could scale down now that our tech's a bit better that our taxation capacity could be improving although of course we'll actually need to do that it could be the government buildings they're costing us a lot they're putting uh, a lot of demand on our economy right government expenses sixteen thousand. we can look to slash some of these expenses that are no longer really fit for purpose and maybe stealing employment away from areas where we need it more Let's now also address some of these extra goods that we don't yet have <laughs> enough of. So we'll import some French steel. We'll of course need to uh, eventually queue up some additional steel mills. Not overly profitable at the minute, but we can work on their profitability. Uh, we also have, what have we got? Lead. This should be uh, hopefully another easy one. Yes. And because we have so many ports, we could also, by the way, uh, reduce a number a little bit, and an incredible amount of bureaucracy. Trade isn't a problem for us. We are absolutely a trading nation. So let's fix uh, all of these goods shortages. Some of them are a little easier to fix than others, though, of course. Like we might want to have a stronger motoring industry, so I might queue up just a couple of those in the capital before returning to trade temporarily. These goods are actually in really high demand across the globe. Let's expand our production of them a little more. At least in our markets, we can't get very good access to them. So I'll move them to the top and we'll prioritize them. Uh, what else do we have? Iron, this should be dead easy. Oh my God, look at the crazy fluctuation in price. If you're an iron day trader in this market, you are just, well, probably not day trader, but hey, look, it's only been a year and it's up from like nothing to 70 bucks. So not bad. <laughs> Uh, and Man of Wars, these are far too expensive and also far too difficult to get a hold of. It is for that reason that we could either scale down our navy or build more shipyards. And I think we'll keep uh, probably needing to build more shipyards. Actually looking a lot better in some of our colonial territories that could be built up a little bit more. We could have Tongan shipyards, Micronesian shipyards. We should do that as well. Provide some employment opportunities. Ooh, looking around the world just briefly... North German Federation starting to do its thing. Oh, oh my God. There's a, there are some problems. Yeah. No, there are some problems. That's fine. Uh, oh. So, you know, we're not the only one getting up to some slightly interesting things. Although I can't help but feel that, look at this, Korean colonization of New Zealand in particular uh, is going incredibly well. We've got a great little foothold here in Western Australia too. Uh, it's got a port and it'll eventually have a railroad too, if you can believe that, which is hilarious. Uh, in the eye of the needle, the monks are dissatisfied with the inclusion of the industrialists in government. Internal, internal politicking. Yeah, we'll just hurt their power. Hey, don't be so disappointed. <laughs> How do you like that? 
Uh, this territory probably has to be our crowning jewel, and in 130 days we'll grab this part as well. And it looks like that'll be the last of the colonizing. We'd have to then go to war to take any more. Uh, honestly, though, pretty decent. Our Papua one is still a long way away from being colonized because of malaria, that's fine. Uh, and then I think I'll just rest with the, the rest of the colonial territories that I have and consider this to be our new homeland. We have mainland Korea. We then have Korean celebs <laughs> down here <laughs> around the Malaysia, Indonesia. And then finally, we have the sort of more oceanic Korea, which has a foothold in Western Australia, the Korean South Island, and then this wonderful uh, collection of islands from Kanak to Tonga to the Solomons, Vanuatu. You name it, we've got it. Let's talk. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me today, everybody, and I will see you all next time.